on understanding divisions. Let us examine roots and gravity of young wisdom, that which we come across when we are still children. My first wisdom was in how I faced violence. I nobly took no part in it. I only pushed people back. I never became like they were. And right here, we have a wisdom that we can truly take a long look at. My main bully was twisted and cunning, likely instructed by his father. We used to be school friends, and then he started fighting me for no reason. He didn't just attack me, but turned everyone against me. He was probably a puppet in his father's sick game. And if not, then pretending to be hurt by someone was maybe his way of making friends. But I remember when he was forced to share his glue in fourth grade. When he got back a mangled tube, he cried that his father would beat him. I think that was the only time I remember him crying. The change in that boy was irreversible. His attacks continued for many years, and at least in my view, were extremely elaborate. This is a young person who became completely unreachable and incapable of reason, possibly emotion. He was a normal person at first, but then became warped, and to me he became a monster. Whatever happened to him in that span of maybe two or three days happened because he was too young to see that he was being manipulated or warped somehow. If that event could have been prevented somehow, he would continue growing up like a normal, boring person. Even though this was fourth grade, we were perfectly capable of spotting trouble. Whatever got him was actually invisible to him. It got into him without him noticing. His father, most likely, used his lack of experience to warp him. As he started making friends, and perhaps spreading whatever lies about me, it was actually more advantageous for him to remain a bully that plays a victim. His father was no longer needed. He entered a different lifeline. He and his stupid friends eventually got caught lying, and the school psychologist who intervened in me pushing him away one final time cracked the case. As two of his friends were supporting his side of the story, and she made them confess the truth. The young psychologist woman came into the classroom, put her hand on my shoulder, and said, Everything's gonna be okay. But my class was manipulated by the boy. A few minutes later, one of the smarter girls that I grew up with said that they didn't want me in the classroom anymore. They saw me as the bully that starts fights. The final skirmish begun as I was trying to save the class comedian, a very short person, from getting beat up. To my surprise, both of them started fighting me, the little comedian and his bully, and then my main bully joined in for the party. I grew up surrounded by bullies. I had no trouble of getting them away from me. If my memory serves correctly, the friends of the bully got together a few days later and started kicking and spitting on me on our way back from school. It was between eight and twelve of them, and as I was getting up, maybe for the fourth time, as they kept pushing me off balance, with the concrete of the sidewalk digging into my fists, I understood how powerful I have become for not fighting them back. To me, they were opportunistic predators. Some would come and kick me when I was down, others waited to knock me down again. Eventually, they got tired and allowed me to walk away without any more shoving. I took a different path and started crying, 
for a long time. Not because I was hurt, but because of how alone I really was. The main bully had another wave come in. This time it was older kids that were five years older, maybe. They made a circle around me and one of them kicked me in the head. It was a spin kick, no doubt, and it did not hurt. But fighting older kids that I have not really seen before and seeing that they had outside clothes on, I stayed down. No one came to help. The girls saw the whole thing, but they didn't come to help. I think everyone was just scared of the older kids. I wasn't hurt. I was just not moving. This was the Russian language class, and the teacher was mad that I was late. I stopped going to school, as to me it became a circus. Then after a few months I got punished and graduated just fine as the teachers didn't want any trouble. Even though I lacked experience, I still did all the right things. I didn't attack back, and I stayed down when I could smell a knife in the skinhead jacket pocket on one of the bullies. And finally, I set myself free from school by becoming a student of pixel art. I spent my time away from school at the biggest arcade in the city. I didn't have money to play, but I loved watching all the other people play. My favorite games were Asterix y Obelix and The Simpsons. And I liked Blanca from Street Fighter 2. I liked how technical Street Fighter 2 was. When Wolfenstein, or Wolfenstein came out in Poland. I was not impressed. 3D graphics destroyed pixel art, but pixel art will rule again someday, mark my words. See, I just had to make a choice, in my own wisdom, to break away from everyone else, as they were kind of getting sick and they were definitely misled. The boys in my class wanted to keep together. Sometime after the event I describe, I've noticed them role-playing boxing. They asked me if I wanted to fight too. They were now honorable fighters in their stupid heads. They kept together because none of them wanted to be alone. They didn't want to be outcasts. But that also meant that they were reinforcing each other's behavior rather than acting on the wisdom that I really truly believe was within them. Where I experienced power, strength, wisdom and independence, they were not growing up correctly. They were drifting in the direction of wherever the stupid group was going. Sometimes I wonder if mandatory military service that we had back then actually fueled violent behavior in preparation for what seemed like more violence. But I think it was parents that were causing most of the harm. I remember one time I had a chokehold put on me by another so-called friend, but I had no interest in hurting him to get out. His father, who beat him with the hose from the washer, was teaching him how to fight military style. I might have caused a situation that made him put a chokehold on me, but inflicting the pain was not a healthy response on his part. I was just being stupid. And I am not sure. I just, I just can't imagine why he would put a chokehold on me. I'm assuming it was something I said. Some years earlier, he said that he wished he grew up watching horror movies so that he had no fear. So there was definitely bad parenting going on here. There was another boy who was violent, but never towards me. When his father found out his grades were really bad, he took him into the girls' restroom and beat him up. His personality changed. His personality change was instant. It was very visible and painful to watch even then. I remember him stealing stuff after that. His father ruined his mind. 
though I think he's a good person now. That was a special person, that boy. I would have ran up to help him if I was wiser. If back then I knew what I know now, I would have sprinted to attack his father to stop the boy from becoming a thief. With all that I have learned from the bullies, I would take him down by sliding into his feet and punching his nose really hard. I was no stranger to nosebleeds. I tell the police that his father was hurting him and I was just protecting him. That's probably why the girls didn't need much convincing that I was a bully. I was breaking up fights to get the bullies to stop hurting people because I sensed what it meant and I saw that bullies make more bullies. But it wasn't fighting, just pushing the red-faced snarling beasts back away from people who didn't even understand what that meant. Do you now remember how there are these tiny events when we are young that dictate all the rest of our lives ahead? That's wisdom. Not philosophy, not education, not schooling, not cultures, not heritage, but the most powerful force there is. Wisdom. It comes from our warrior nature, but then it flourishes and grows to make us great and peaceful philosophers. It is, however, easily stunted by groupthink, by microcultures, cultures that we get from home, and by surrounding cultures, a lot of times cultures that are driven by poverty. By doing what others do to stay with them as a friend, people get ill, their minds become warped. But more than that, unfortunately, these tiny events in our youth also mark points of no return, at least not for a long while. I see myself as nothing if I took the disgusting path to be friends with the bullies. It's just unimaginable to me. No way. Bullies who later ended up attacking one of the special needs girls. And again, the other girls barely raised their voice. To their credit, I remember their voice being raised. But this was a moment that required fury, anger, and I dare say, well-placed violence. Hopefully, I th am pretty sure that they figured out in that moment that the cool boys were actually just stupid monsters and they understood to stay away from them and protect their sister. Special needs does not mean that someone is broken, it just means that they need good friends. I felt like an outsider. I didn't know I belonged anywhere. I didn't know I could find that psychologist lady that helped a year or two before to rain her amazing wrath. I didn't know to become friends with the principal, and I didn't know to call the police. I trust the girls that I grew up with to take care of her. I know that they looked after her. We were a family together for almost a decade. I don't think any of those people were ordinary. It was a special class. When I left for America, I was glad to leave it all behind. There was one more bully in Brooklyn, but having watched NYPD Blue on TV, I knew I could call the police, and I knew to tell them not to press charges. NYPD broke up the gang. Then the mothers stepped in. And right before I came to Michigan, the bully barely whimpered, fuck Poles. He was not racist. He was just made sick. He didn't hate white people, so he picked the Polish people to hate something because hate is what he was taught. He too had an opportunity to go to the library in search of wisdom, rather than going to the boxing club to get good at fighting to show everyone what a big boy he is. In the 20 minute walk back from school, he punched me maybe four times in the back of my head. Full force, full theatrics. I could hear him charging up back there. Once we made it to the street we lived on, 
I finally turned around to his punches. I was ignoring them before, as I became an artist when it came to bullies. We were maybe 17 or so, and his boxing instructor was bad. He opened up a full volley with punches to my face. It only made it red for long enough for NYPD Blue to get a full picture of what they needed to do. Like the bullies in Poland, this boy needed wisdom early on. When his brother or cousin or mad stupid uncle was saying that white people are crazy but Poles are even worse, this boy needed to walk away from that conversation. Better yet, here is what he needed to say to his stupid uncle's face. Out of the night that covers me, Black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever Ides may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. In the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloodied but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how narrow the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. In a way, all this boy ever needed was a poem, a thing that would help him grow the necessary wisdom against the hate that ran rampant in his family, apparently. My bullies were monsters, but they did not know hate. They relished inflicting pain, but they had no hate in them. This boy did get poisoned by it. I think the police, to underline the gravity of the situation, never told him I didn't press the charges, but they kind of left it hanging in the air so that he maybe could be, be arrested later on. He learned his lesson. Hate of any kind of group of people as a teenager? That's a lot of evil to handle. That is not normal at all. Rejection of hate requires a culture of wisdom way early on. A young person must immediately reject divisions, at all cost. It is so important to the health and the growing up of our humanity. In that case, the Brooklyn bully could choose to reject the family members that propagated hate or permanently become a hater himself. Though his mom would be proud. The path of rejection of hate and division could make him an outcast. From the perspective of old man him, he only had one real choice. Become a philosopher and make those who spread hate in his family the outcasts. He needed to become someone capable of inspiring his family to great wisdom and far and away from that which is not worthy of any of us. He had an opportunity to become a philosopher and change the world, but he became a bully. That, to me, is a big tragedy. As big of a tragedy as that friend who got beat up by his father and instantly warped. Do you see? And are you able to see it in the strangers that you come across in your lives, that they are often being pushed because they lack wisdom and experience. The trick is made by a family member often looking for affirmation to their own hate, or looking to simplify their own life in some filthy way. I believe that every violent person had an opportunity to become a philosopher, but it was actually stolen from them. But they cannot comprehend that it was not their choice. Because our minds tend to fill in gaps and try to make us feel whole. People just forget that they were misled. 
Violence, division, and especially hate are so incredibly alien to us that it is like breathing toxic air. Those things do not emerge in children. They are put there, and almost always deliberately. And it takes root because like cults, it holds cheap answers, plugging up questions and offering a target to vent on, a target to hate. Long before a child is made ill by a broken, mind-warping idea, there is a long stretch of time when they are more than capable of comprehending greatness. Restraint, dignity, nobility, unbreakability, fortitude, courage, honor, love and insight and foresight and understanding and authenticity and heroism. These are the ideas that when taught early on will immunize against the easier toxic wrong and bring a young person a feeling of ennoblement for choosing the harder enlightening right. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not divided. We are not different. We are one family. We've always been one family. We are to repair schools and fix poverty and prevent the propagation of broken ideas that only give an impression of answers while keeping a person imprisoned within invisible walls of hate. Walls that prevent a person's wisdom and greatness from ever reaching the heights that are worthy of them. We are one, one family under the sun.